Hello and welcome everyone to another live sessions game brought to you by chess.com and international master Daniel Wrench. Here we go. Um, I'm playing another IM. Uh, won't necessarily give away his, uh, his name here on our playing server to protect the innocent, you know, witness protection program, all that stuff. Um, but uh, we are rated roughly the same, both rated around 2300 here on this particular server um, and he's an IM. So should be fun, right? Let's play e4 and let's uh, let's see what happens. You know, um, well, the c5 Sicilian, as I talked about in uh, one of our previous live sessions, um, I like playing English attack setups pretty much whenever I can. Yugoslav attack, English attack type setups. One of the main and only Sicilians you can't really get that setup against is the Sveshnikov. But in this case, um, my opponent has not chosen to employ a Sveshnikov. In fact, he's played g6, which is this is sort of an awkward move order of the accelerated dragon or mainline dragon. Now, I could play bishop to e3 here, um, or, uh, or I mean, I could play a number of moves. I could play bishop e3, I could play bishop e2, I could prepare to castle short, which is more of a classical Sicilian. I could castle long and try to employ a Yugoslav attack against the dragon. But generally, this particular move order isn't chosen for a reason. Um, a lot of times, if, if black wants to play an accelerated dragon, he will he will choose to play g6 on move 4 instead of knight f6. Um, now, the disadvantage of that move order is it does allow white to play the Maroxy bind with c4. If he, Again, if he had played g6 instead of knight f6 attacking my e4 pawn, I, I could have played c4 and developed my knight out behind the c pawn um, and had a Maroxy bind. However, the disadvantage of playing this particular move order is, is now I have the option of capturing on c6 and playing e5. Um, this is this is sort of a, uh, a it has the option of going into a gambit, which is if I take on c6, he takes with the b pawn. I play e5, and if he if he moves the knight to d5, I can capture on d5 twice, ending with the queen, um, and I'm um, up a pawn. Sometimes that particular gambit is playable, but in that particular variation, if um, if I'm able to play bishop c4 and attack f7 and induce him to play e6, it's actually a worse structure for black. Um, it's a little bit hard to handle here, I think, probably saying all the variations in our head. So um, instead of me continuing to ramble on about that line, let me let me see if he goes for it, and maybe we'll just happen to see the position live. Uh, my guess is he may not play knight d5. Yeah, so he, he chose, okay, if he had played knight to d5, and I had captured twice with the queen, and he moves the rook on b8, rook on a8 to b8, and I had played bishop c4, hitting f7, he would have been in a position where having to play e6 combined with g6 is very weakening to his dark squares. Because again, my queen on d5 and my bishop on c4 would have been barreling down on the f7 pawn, and he would have had to play e6. So usually when players play this particular move order, the only way for them to make this line work is with knight to g8. Um, I don't think this is a very good line for black. Uh, black is losing time. Uh, white center is a good is a good center. And with, with natural aggressive play, I'm pretty sure that white usually reaches an edge. With that said, black's position is not busted by any means. Um we hope you enjoyed this video demo from chess.com. Subscribe today to finish this video and get unlimited access to our full video library. Your membership also includes access to Chess Mentor, the most advanced interactive training tool available anywhere. You'll also get full access to the Opening Explorer, Tactics Trainer, and much, much more. So sign up today and get serious about improving your game.